graphing functions. Old hat. This entire lesson should feel like you've done it before. Graph each function for the given domain. So sometimes you'll be given a domain, which if you think back is a list of x values. So you're being told, plug these numbers in, get your y values, move on with your life. If you had me in the past, you probably remember XY tables used to be pretty um, beefy things. They would look something like this. You know, there'd be a, an, an X column, then there would be a uh, something like uh, one half X plus three column, you know, a rule, and then a Y column, and then an ordered pair column. And we would, you know, fill in a bunch of information here, and it took a little while. Also, we could get some ordered pairs to plot. We're not doing that. We're in Algebra 1. We've got better things to do with our time than make giant XY tables. We're going to make XY tables. Nice and easy. Here, they're going to tell me what values I'm using for X. So, plug those in. All we got to do is figure out how am I going to determine the Y values. To do that, what we want is this equation, which I just drew through the 6, oh well, to say Y equals. It does not at the moment. How can we make it say Y equals? Well, we got to get Y by itself. How do we do that? First thing, add X to both sides. So we get 2y equals x plus 6. That's just shifting the negative x to the other side of the equation. When we do that, its sign changes. y is still not by itself, so we have to divide everything by 2. Everything. So x becomes 1 half x, and 6 becomes 3. So now we know how to get y. We need to take half of the x value and then add 3. Yes, folks, the order of operations is still a thing. Multiply before add. So, we just got to work these through. Half of negative 4 is negative 2. Negative 2 plus 3 is 1. Half of negative 2 is negative 1. Negative 1 plus 3 is 2. Half of 0 is 0, 0 plus 3 is 3, half of 2 is 1, 1 plus 3 is 4. Yes, by Algebra 1, I expect that you can work that through, talking it out or in your head. That's why I don't need a giant table to show this anymore. Once we have our ordered pairs, we need to plot them. So negative 4, 1 is left 4 up 1. Negative 3, 2 is left 3 up 2. Negative 2, 3, left 2 up 3. Wait, I'm plotting points I shouldn't be plotting. Hold that thought. It's negative 2, 2, so left 2 up 2. 0, 3 says stay in the middle, go up 3. And 2, 4 says right 2 up 4. I was given a list of x values, so I only plot the ordered pairs, I do nothing else. This is done. Moving on. I'm given a list of x values, so I'm going to get some ordered pairs, I'm going to plot some ordered pairs, and I'm going to walk away. So let's see. My x values are negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, and 2. And my equation says f of x equals the absolute value of x. For anybody who's looking at this going, I, I, I don't like that, it doesn't have a y, I will take this opportunity to remind you that f of x and y are interchangeable. So if it would make you feel better, you can absolutely write y equals the absolute value of x. That's fine. So I don't need to manipulate this equation like I did the first one. It already says y equals. What we need to do is figure out how absolute value works again, because it's been a little while. So 
by definition, absolute value is the distance that a number is on the number line away from zero. Distance, you must remember, cannot be negative. Absolute value is a negative destroyer. That's what it does. That's all it does. A lot of students, and I'm talking 6th grade through 12th grade, and I've taught them all, will take absolute value to not be a negative destroyer, but to be a sign flipper. That's not what absolute value does. It doesn't change the sign. It just destroys negatives. If you didn't have a negative, absolute value doesn't even care that you exist. It's like, yeah, cool, fine, you're okay. All absolute value does is remove negative signs. So the absolute value of negative 2, take away the negative sign, it's 2. The absolute value of negative 1, take away the negative sign, it's 1. The absolute value of 0, doesn't even care. Absolute value looks at 0, goes, you don't have a negative sign, I don't care about you. You get to stay the way you are, you're still 0. And the same thing happens with 1 and 2. Absolute value looks at those numbers, goes, you don't have negative signs, I don't care that you even exist, and moves on with its life. So positive numbers stay what they are. After we get through the hassle of getting our ordered pairs, now we just got to go plot them. So negative 2, 2 is left 2, up 2. Negative 1, 1 is left 1, up 1. 0, 0 is the origin. 1, 1 is right 1, up 1. And 2, 2 is right 2, up 2. The general shape that you're looking at here is a V. Hard corner on the bottom, it's definitely a V. It's a very wide V, but it's a V. We will not connect these. Again, I was given a list of values to put in, so I just plot the order pairs, and I'm done. Examples graph each function. If no domain is given, the domain is all real numbers. Okay. So what does that mean? You can see clearly, these are the last two, and you can see them both. There is no domain given. I just give you a function. So what does the domain is all real numbers mean? It means you can literally pick anything you want. This is going to be the time where we will plot our points that we get and connect them and put arrows on both ends. That's how we show all real numbers. Instead of a set of numbers, this is everything. So we connect and put arrows. Now, I do have a couple of rules. Unless you are directed otherwise by a book, you are, when you pick your numbers, to use two negative numbers, zero, and two positive numbers. That is not up for debate. And if you had me for pre-algebra, you're used to that, because I had the same role in pre-algebra. Two negative numbers, zero, and two positive numbers. And my suggestion is you use the smallest numbers you can. So if you can get away with using negative two, negative one, zero, one, and two, do it. If you're wondering what I mean by get away with, technically you could always use those numbers. Sometimes they don't make sense. That's not going to be the case here, but we will talk about it. The key thing you're looking for is, actually, I can show you. So temporary pause while I scroll back up here. This first example, I gave you the domain, but there's a one half with the X when we solve this thing out for Y. And that tells me I would not want to use, if I were picking my own numbers, I wouldn't want to use negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, and 2. Because negative 1 and 1 would give me decimals, or fractions, however you want to deal with it. And I don't want those if I can avoid them. If there's a fraction attached to your x value, you want to pick numbers that are multiples of the denominator. 
since the denominator of a half is 2, I want to pick even numbers. Like negative 4, negative 2, 0, 2, 4, if I had chosen a fifth number. If it were 1 third, I would use negative 6, negative 3, 0, 3, and 6. If it were 1 fourth, I would use negative 8, negative 4, 0, 4, and 8. The only reason I'm doing that is it'll guarantee that my y values will come out as uh, integers, as nicely plottable numbers. And there's something to be said for a nicely plottable number. Now, we don't have to worry about that here because there is not a fraction with x. It's a whole number multiplier, so it doesn't matter. So, table time, x, y. When I can, I use negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, and 2. They're the smallest possible numbers I can use. Smaller numbers generally make for easier mental math. This equation already has y equals, yes, it's backwards, and if you feel better flipping it around and saying y equals 2x plus 1, you may absolutely do so. But the key thing is y is by itself, so I can start doing my math. So this says I'm going to double my x value and then add 1. 2 times x plus 1. So 2 times negative 2 is negative 4. Plus 1 is negative 3. 2 times negative 1 is negative 2. Plus 1 is negative 1. 2 times 0 is 0. Plus 1 is 1. 2 times 1 is 2. Plus 1 is 3. And 2 times 2 is 4. Plus 1 is 5. We've got five ordered pairs. We should plot those. Negative 2, negative 3 is left 2, down 3. Negative 1, negative 1 is left 1, down 1. 0, 1 is stay in the middle, go up 1. 1, 3 is right 1, up 3. And 2, 5 is right 2, up 5. These make a straight line. We do need to connect them. Hopefully you did a better job than I did. We put arrows on both ends of that line to show that it goes on forever. And then we're done with this problem. Last thing, y equals x squared. Okay, that's not terribly difficult at all. x squared, so it's x times x. So there's my five values, two negative, zero, two positive. You definitely want to keep them small here. If you were to, say, use four or bigger, and consequently negative four or smaller, you're going to be dealing with things like 16, 25, 36... For y values and we don't have space for that we don't even have space for nine on this graph so you can't even use three you have to use negative two negative one zero one and two so negative two squared that means negative two times negative two negative times a negative is positive folks two times two is four if anything trips you up in this section that's going to be it it's going to be squaring a negative number remember that negative times negative is positive so negative 1 times negative 1 is positive 1. 0 times itself is 0. 1 times 1 is 1. And 2 times 2 is 4. I have ordered pairs to plot. Negative 2, 4. Negative 1, 1. The origin, 1, 1. And 2, 4. This is not quite a V. If you try to connect these with straight lines, you wouldn't quite be able to do it. This is actually what mathematicians are going to call a U-shape. It bends at the bottom. It's not a hard turn. The technical name for this thing is a parabola. Provided we get to chapters 8 and 9 this year in Algebra 1, we will study parabolas in detail. If we don't get there, nothing to worry about. Parabolas are a key feature of Algebra 2. They are simply the graph of anything any function that has an x squared in it. So remember to look and think if x has a number multiplier, even if it's a fraction, you should have a straight line. If x is inside absolute value symbols, you should have something that looks like a v. 
And if x has an exponent of 2, you should have something that looks roughly like a u.